This video was part two in a series of three discussing the methods of pollination for plants in general, specifically vegetable plants. If you haven't already seen part one, I encourage you to go back and watch part one before watching this part as the introduction for all three parts is in part one. In part one, we listed the three methods of pollination that plants use and we also we went into further detail about airborne pollination and how it's important to know how pollination works in regards to raising a vegetable garden more importantly if you're going to save your seeds in this part we will discuss insect borne pollination this is where the pollen is carried by insects your most common insects that will carry pollen are bees and butterflies. Any insect that comes in contact with one plant and then comes in contact with another can carry the pollen. Most prominently, that's going to happen from insects that feed on the nectar. Something that's little known is ladybugs, or sometimes called ladybirds or lady beetles, uh, also feed on the nectar besides eating other insects. So they could also carry pollen. Cross pollination is likely with insect borne pollination because of the fact that an insect may feed on the nectar from one plant and then go to another plant of similar variety but yet a different strain and carry the pollen with it. Because of this, it's best to have a minimum of 300 yards between similar varieties and 500 yards would be even better. We discussed windbreaks in regards to the airborne pollination and windbreaks will not help you with insect borne pollination because the insect can simply go around or go over the windbreak. When you're using plants that rely on insects to spread their pollen, insecticides should be used very sparingly because while they will kill your pest insects, they may also kill the insects that you're relying on to carry your pollen. It's also, it would be beneficial to sow seed that will attract insects in the vicinity of those plants to help pull them in to help spread your pollen and increase the viability of the seeds that you save. One example of seeds, uh, you may use different flowers, zinnias or marigolds are very good you could plant honeysuckle near your garden and that will attract the insects to the area and because uh, some insects have a very strong sense of smell and the fragrance can help draw in the insects beekeeping is something that could go hand in hand with your gardening because of the fact that the honeybees are becoming less and less plentiful and this way you could get benefit in several directions. Your honeybees are going to take the nectar from your plants. Pollen is going to stick to their feet. And when they go to the next plant, they're going to deposit that pollen as they're getting more nectar. Then they take the nectar back to their hive and make honey. So you've gotten the honey and you've gotten your plants pollinated at the same time one plant that uh, you could easily sow around your garden uh, around the perimeter uh, in the areas that you need a ground cover is clover uh, clover number one it's a legume so it puts nitrogen into the soil we may discuss that in a later video if, if uh, people express a desire to hear about it and besides that the flowers on the clover will attract the bees here are a few examples of the more commonly grown garden vegetables that rely upon insects for their pollination. Keep this in mind, maybe make a copy of this list to have on hand to help you remember so that you can use this list to help in planting your garden. Asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celeriac, celery, Chinese cabbage, also sometimes called bok choy, collards, cucumber, eggplant, kale, kohlrabi, melons, mustard, 
onions, parsley, parsnips, peppers, pumpkins, squash, radishes, rutabaga, and turnips. One thing to keep in mind with these things is sometimes similar plants that are actually a different plant, for example, two different types of melons, they can possibly cross-pollinate. If that happens, then there's some chance that the seeds may come up the next year, but you have something completely different than what you expect. Another example is cucumbers can possibly cross with some types of melons. Uh, they are all in the same family, and while it's not as prominent as it would be for two different strains of cucumber to cross, it is a possibility to keep in mind. Personally, I like to separate those by a small distance, but uh, the distance would be much smaller than I would use, for example, if it were two types of cucumbers than I would use for between a cantaloupe and a honeydew, for example. I'm going to wind up part two here. Uh, there will be a part three where we discuss self-pollinating plants. I appreciate you taking the time to listen and watch. I welcome any comments, any subscriptions, or any questions. Feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to answer.